Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. Okay, I got Peggy Hale McPhillips with me, and she knows everything there is to know about the history of Norfolk, right, Peggy? If you ask the right questions. <laughs> That's right. That's your part. Okay, Fort Norfolk, I got to tell you, Fort Norfolk, when I was living here in the 1980s, was one of my favorite places to go because I could go out there and I could just kind of reflect. It had a perfect water view, mm -hmm. nice and quiet. But what the heck is it? It's one of Norfolk's best kept secrets. Yeah. A lot of people have heard about it but don't know where it is or they don't even know about it. Do you know where it is? I do. Oh, well, it's where at is it? 801 then? Front Street. Um, the Army Corps of Engineers okay. owns it yes. today. Um, kind of between the Red Cross and the Army Corps of Engineers. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, and now, of course, Harbor Heights. Sure. Just go all the or way. Harbor's Edge. Harbor's Edge. Go all the way south on Collie Avenue, turn right on Front Street, and you will see a guardhouse where you show your photo ID, and they will let you park behind the gatehouse and wander in to have a self-guided tour of the fort. And on Sunday afternoons from June through September, Norfolk Historical Society provides docents to give you a guided tour from noon to 4 p.m. And you can actually go into some of the buildings, oh, okay. which um, the buildings that are there today date to, most of them date to 1810. Oh, okay. Um, the fort was built on um, the land that was one of 19 fortifications that George Washington ordered to be built along the East Coast in 1794. Wait a minute. That's after the Big War. That's after the Big War. But oh, we had a I feeling that England wasn't quite through with us. Really? They were still Which, kind of yeah, we hacked gained off a little bit? independence from England um, after the Revolutionary War, but we didn't really gain freedom of the seas for much longer. England had navigation laws. They boarded American ships and took off alleged British deserters from the ship. So we knew there was another war coming. So Yorktown was just really the last chapter, the, of the last revolution. verse of the first chapter, right. I guess. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, so t let's go back. What was Norfolk like post-Revolutionary War then? Well, Norfolk, of and course. And by the way, I need to say this. Every time I have you on the sofa, you've read about this stuff. You don't know I about this firsthand. I wasn't there. Just you know, to, Bob, I've heard about it. Thank you for clarifying yeah. that. Norfolk, of course, was burned um, in early 1776, completely burned to the Gone. ground. Gone. Um, but by 1800, we had a population of 6,000, which was our pre-revolutionary wow. war population. We were one of the largest towns in Virginia. The country was 95% rural then, so we were a pretty big city. So even though they got burned, they all came, most of them came back. They all came back. They all came back. They started rebuilding. Um, by the War of 1812, I think we had about seven or 8,000 people here, mostly living along what is now the Elizabeth River downtown. Well, and I was kind of surprised, uh, we were up in Yorktown, that there were really a lot of uh, British sympathizers. In fact, probably the majority of the people that were living around here Sure. Kind of second guess. We were, were we doing the uh, right thing. We were a merchant class here. We had a lot of Scottish merchants, and we were very dependent on trade with Europe and the West Indies to keep our economy going. Everybody depended on trade, whether they were a sailor or a shopkeeper. So there were a lot of Tories here who really were just happy with the way things were and didn't really want um, a war with England. Hmm. And then, of course, because of the waterfront, we were really having to, Washington was getting us prepared to, do, to fight a naval war mm -hmm. in our own harbor. Exactly. We, we felt that the next assault that would come would come from the ocean, in which it did. Um, and in 1810, the fort was refortified. It has been under control of the United States Army, United States Navy. During the Civil War, it changed hands twice. It belonged to the Federal Navy, and then the Confederates took it over so briefly. So it started as federal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the Confederates took it over very, very briefly during the Civil War until Norfolk was occupied. Now, the occupation of Norfolk kind of was fairly peaceful, wasn't it? Not if you read first-hand accounts. Really? You read, you read a lot of first-hand accounts um, about abuse, um, that very, very strict provost marshals. But there was, wasn't a big battle. We didn't that did have it. a big battle here, no. It was more just a very uncomfortable way of life. Um, Benjamin Butler uh, um, ordered every fourth dog to be killed unless the dog had a license. In just a to car. kind of just, show that they could. Yeah. Just now, to what role did the fort play during, during the, that time? During then? the Civil War, the fort was occupied briefly by the Confederates, and by that time, the Navy owned it. 
and had built a large powder magazine there, and we used the ammunition from the powder magazine to supply the CSS Virginia in her famous battle against the Monitor. Oh, okay. And then when the Federal Navy took it back over, they used the second floor of the officers' quarters to house Confederate prisoners of war that had served on the blockade runner Mary and Anne. And they left something that's still there. They left a whole wall of graffiti that some of it is very, very modern, what you really? might see today, very graphic, <laughs> and it's still there. Well, some would say guys, there will be guys no matter what time period they're in, right? Yeah, but that's 19th century graffiti out there. Wow. Now, at the same time then, to kind of tie it in, was the, what's now Hurrah Players building, or the academy, that was a that hospital, That was right? the Norfolk Academy. It was built in 1840, and during the Civil War, it was used as a hospital for Union soldiers. And we have a painting at the Chrysler Museum that shows tents on the grounds of the Norfolk Academy. Wow. Peggy, we got less than a minute left, but we can't talk about Fort Norfolk and the history of Norfolk without talking about Louis Guy. Louis Guy. We lost him a, few, we lost him a little while ago. In May, my mentor, my friend, everybody's friend. But he, uh, he carried this in his heart, didn't he? He, he was. An engineer yeah. with a soft heart for history. Exactly. Um, he was president of Norfolk Historical Society for five years, and we have recently named a scholarship after him, and we've also renamed our Second Wednesday History Series after him. So we're trying to carry him along with us, um, miss him every day. Well, you hit it on the head that, it was, uh, that Fort Norfolk's one of the best kept secrets, but it's an awesome place to go. So head on down to the Fort Norfolk District, just south of the, uh, the, the Medical Center yeah. between the Red Cross and the Corps of Engineers, and How about that? enjoy our history. When we come back, MacArthur Center is more than just shopping, but we want you to shop there too. Stay tuned.